Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. We're getting back to our super glue gun build. That's right. Previously, we selected all the components and made a test PCB that we can put inside the handle. In today's episode, we're going to wire that up, attach the motor, trigger, and hot end, and then program it using AVR Studio so we can control all of those things and see how well it works. And then we have to put a motor and the hot end on top, and we'll have pretty much a finished product, or well, at least a finished prototype by the end, right? Yes, but yes, the handle part will be pretty close to what we want. The top of it, we wanna make sure that works first before we make that all fancy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this will be a pretty good proof of concept. We're about, what, a couple months into it, so it's about time we get something that looks good. Nice. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Okay, I'm going to go in here and design a few more features. We need a spring to push back the trigger. So I've adjusted this file so we have quarter inch hole in the trigger and then we also have a receivership for it here in the handle. Obviously we'll need both you know, sides of the handle to keep this in place. Uh, what I hope to accomplish in this episode is to uh, build up the extruder part of this so we can actually test you know, the whole thing. Like we have all the controls here to drive the gun. The extruder part, well, might not be quite as refined. So what I'm gonna do here is create some uh, mounting points that are symmetrical. I'm gonna drive through, eh, you know, like a uh, size four screw on the inside. Make sure it's all good, looks good. Cool. All right, looks pretty good. Well, um, I'm going to start printing this half and then I'll design the other half. Still working on the uh, extruder design. I have a lot of mass here that will hold the silicon entry point of the nozzle. I haven't started on the nozzle holding yet, but that will go here on this side. All right, so we have our bearing that I actually imported from McMaster Car. It's a cool thing you can do with Fusion 360. You can uh, browse to a part in McMaster Car and then load it in as a 3D file. So then we have our uh, gear here, the shaft, and then a cap to go over that. And the glue stick will go right down the middle right there. Uh, yeah, so this design is getting pretty close. I think what I'll do is uh, create like a, a sloth trough for the glue sticks to like lay down and go into this. And then I can start printing this up. Well, actually I might get the hot end extrusion in place as well. Then I can print this, bolt it onto the new uh, handle part, and then we can start wiring it up because it'll be fairly complete. The next thing we're gonna do is figure out how to attach this to the main handle. Um, we have our original <clears throat> mock-up here. It shows the extruder motor being about this far forward. What really matters though is its relation to the um, hot end because the hot end shows us how far forward the nozzle is actually gonna be. So if you put the motor too far back, the gun's gonna be really stumpy and short. Uh, so I think I wanna have it a little bit further forward. Yeah, so I have a uh, Fusion 360 drawing of this part. I need to see if I can merge that drawing with this drawing and then uh, have everything you know, oriented correctly. And then as far as the center line's concerned, everything on this sketch was drawn from the center or where the halves of it go together. So I wanna make sure the center of the glue stick lines up with that. I printed the new handle pieces. I'm just going to screw them together and then test the spring. No springs. So, you wanna live in a world without springs, huh? Yes! All right, but you're not gonna like it. <laughs> blah, 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 duck tails. <laughs> Do you think Donald Duck really wanted his nephews to go on a bunch of dangerous adventures with their Uncle Scrooge? Like maybe he thought they, they would just hang around the mansion, you know, but that's not what happened. Well, it seems pretty good. Uh, I have most of the new motor mount designed. Uh, I don't know if I should print it yet though until I design how the hot end goes on to it. I guess I could print it to get myself some inspiration for the next step of the process. But so far, everything looks pretty good. Now the main things that'll go up here are the motor control the uh, triac control for the 
hot end, and then the temperature control. Obviously there might be more things on the final product such as like a push button or LED indicator, but this is enough for our testing purposes right now. Okay, we all tried holding the glue gun. Max with his large hands, Karen with her small hands, and Karen did have uh, some advice. She noticed that when you pull the trigger a little bit, it barely moves and you have to pull the trigger quite a bit for it to move pretty much at all. So I'm thinking what's happening is that the range of the magnetic field around the neodymium magnet is um, not linear. Well, I know it's not linear. So as it's um, being moved toward the Hall effect sensor, the range of values is gonna change in a nonlinear fashion. It's gonna be more logarithmic. This is just a guess, but I'm thinking it's about like this. So this is the trigger ramp up and then the speed ramp up. So what we have to do is we have to um, ramp up the speed quickly with a smaller trigger press and then round it off as the trigger is fully pressed. So I need to convert this in code, basically take the range of the trigger and convert it to the range of the PWM, taking into account the curve on the magnetic field. I've crammed the hot end into this adapter and I put some mounting holes on the side. So if, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna laser cut some wood to go along the side of it and then I can space it out and hold it in place. I pretty much just have to plug these things into the microcontroller and most of the code is there. Felix is still working on the um, float to char conversion, which has stumped both of us, but we can still do the test even without the um, logarithmic to linear trigger control. Uh, yeah, but this should give us a pretty good approximation of how big our final product will be. Okay, I laser cut these wooden pieces on the side. Now I'm gonna make a few spacers to compress this, so then I'll wrap it up with Captain tape. Then we should be able to start doing extrusion tests. So the idea with this is to rig up something that will be fairly close to the shape of the actual, you know, prototype gun. So before I go in and make everything all nice and fancy, and I mean, I made this pretty much like a real case, but before I make this like a real case, I just make, wanna make sure all the angles are correct and everything works. So yeah, time to cut some more spacers and to continue. One last thing to rewire is the <clears throat> coil switch here. Now looking at it, I realized my early assumption was incorrect. So we have two windings going to the uh, hot end. So I think it's two separate heating elements. And what happens here is one of them is always energized, the blue one, see this? But then the switch, you know, d determines whether or not the second winding with the, uh, the white wire is energized. But uh, they're wired in parallel, which means they're both on at the same time. So both coils is the high setting and only one coil is the low setting. So what I'll just do is I'll just uh, cut the switch off and then tie this uh, white wire to the uh, red and blue wires. And then, you know, basically it'll turn on both coils always. But then of course we can turn them on and off at different intervals to adjust the temperature because we have a temperature sensor attached. So what I'm doing now is I am attaching the temperature control to the second ADC so we can get its analog measurement. We tested this in an earlier episode. We have some baseline values I would, I would hope would still be somewhat accurate. I guess we'll find out. So we have positive voltage going into the thermistor. The thermistor goes into the ADC and then it is pulled down to ground with a 5K resistor. We also have an output pin going to the triac, so we should have control of that as well. It looks like everything, so now it's just down to software. Here is my preliminary motor code. We get the speed from the Hall effect sensor, and then we look to see if it's above a threshold. So the threshold is the value that we see on the ADC when the system first boots. So you could trick it, but you know, We'll figure that out later. Okay, so if the trigger is past the threshold, then we do a few simple calculations. We take the total ADC value minus the trigger value, and then we divide it by two. We make sure the motor is going forward, and then we inverse that to create the speed. And then we set a retract timer. So basically, if the motor is moving, we set a retract timer so that when the motor is not moving, the code knows that it was moving, and then it knows to retract. Okay, so if the trigger is released, it says, okay, is there, was there a retract timer set? If so, it decrements it. If it makes it all the way to zero, uh, we turn off the speed. And we, the reason we do this here is because if we decremented it down to zero, the next time we come around, this uh, would be false and we wouldn't get to this. So it's just easier to do it here. However, if it's not zero yet, uh, reverse the speed of it and then give it a speed of 100. Else, if there's no retract timer, uh, we also make sure that the motor's off. So let's see how it works. 
So I can pull the trigger, start moving. The uh, hot end's not on, by the way. Full speed. And when I release, see how it goes back a little bit? And that's the magic sauce, just like a 3D printer. If we retract the glue from the barrel, it will prevent dripping of the glue gun, which is one of the major problems with modern glue guns is that they just drip. There are a few things we have to um, figure out still. I mean, right now I just have a hard-coded value of 10,000 cycles for the reverse motion. But what if you do this? Like if you lightly tap the trigger, you just move it a little bit and let go, a little bit and let go, you're actually uh, reversing more than you're going forward. So we need to figure out some sort of um, correlation between you only reverse a certain amount in comparison to how far you went forward. Yeah, but uh, everything seems basically to be working. Uh, there is an issue with the triac. It's um, getting stuck on. There is code control for that. We call it uh, hot end on off. It just sets one of the bits on the microcontroller. That is working. I checked it with a scope. So whatever that problem is, is probably with the triac itself. Um, this is the first time trying the new triac. So maybe I wired something wrong. But when that's ready, we are going to sense the current from the ADC, map it the same as we did several episodes ago. And then if it's above the target, we turn it off so it'll get cooler. And then if it goes below the target, we turn it on. So we got a range of about four or five degrees. That should be plenty close for this. All right, so we'll just get the triac figured out and uh, then we'll pretty much have this uh, early prototype ready. Well, Mr. Heckendorn is having a little bit of trouble integrating the uh, AC control circuit into the, the board that he's building into the hot glue gun. So uh, he asked me to revisit the circuit and see if I could figure out what's going on. If you remember the first time we did this, we put everything into a proto board and uh, we got some feedback that perhaps it wasn't the most safe way of doing it. I, I rebuilt the circuit on this, uh, this perf board here. It's a little more safe, I'd say, but um, as you can see, off camera, um, I had a little bit of an incident here where I, I didn't solder it quite right and something exploded. I wish I could have got that on, on film, but I remember next time when I do anything with AC, I'll make sure the camera's running before I power it up. Just, it was spectacular. So on the bottom here, we've got the surface mount uh, optocoupler and uh, the surface mount triac. And here's the circuit that I'm using. I got the circuit from Bristol Watch. On this circuit, I omitted the diac because we are ignoring all this all these other components here. This is for handling the um, zero crossing. We're not gonna deal with that at all. So on the bottom, there is the optocoupler and the triac, it's both surface mount. I'm using a different uh, triac than what uh, Mr. Heckendorn had integrated uh, on his test, but he's gonna rebuild it using these components. And then on the top here, we've got our 220 ohm resistor. This one, this one I actually blew out because this is our pin MT2 and this is our pin MT1 and this is our pin MT2. And when I blew up this resistor, I had actually connected the 220 ohm from MT2 to MT2 here. So um, I figured that out. That was, I'm, I, oh, I really wish we could have had that on film because it was just, it was awesome. But anyhow, we have a push button. In the uh, final build, it'll simulate when the microcontroller reads the, um, the temperature sensor and it says, hey, the, the hot, hot glue gun, the, the hot end needs to be turned on. And then there's an LED here to, so we can have some visual feedback. And we have uh, our capacitor with our resistor here. And then um, our resistor from the uh, microcontroller to the optocoupler. Let me put everything back together and then I'll turn it on so you can see how it works. So now I've got the board screwed back down in there um, and I have our pins connected. And this light is going to represent our load. So I'm gonna plug it in. Here's our on and off toggle switch. It's currently in the off mode. And when I flip it to on, we have uh, our AC coming into this regulator, which then gives us DC out to the Arduino. And then we have three pins, one pin going into our button here. And this is gonna be um, the temperature sensor. But right now we're just we're just toggling on and off. So we're sending a signal to the microcontroller to tell us, hey, turn it on, turn, then turn it off. So um, in the glue gun, it's just gonna turn the, the hot end on or off. And then um, another pin going to the anode of the uh, optocoupler. This other pin is just going to our status LED so we know what's going on. So I'm gonna plug it in. Our power LED, our, our LED from on the regulator coming on so we know that it's got AC going here. We got lights on our microcontroller, so our microcontroller's powered our five volts. And I'm gonna tap the button. And when I tap this button, I expect that LED, that status LED to come on and also our light bulb to come on. Are you ready? Oh, it's just working. Not very exciting. The light turns on when I push the button. All right, so it works. Cool, I'm gonna pass this on to Mr. Heckendorn and he's gonna reevaluate the circuit and uh, see what he did wrong in his and then try and get it working in the hot glue gun. 
Felix rewired the triac in a test configuration and then once he verified that worked, I wired it up into the glue gun over here. I have the code written in such a way that when I pull the trigger and the motor moves, it'll also turn on the triac. The light bulb right now is simulating the hot end. It looks like we have proper control over it, so that's good. Now what I can do is I can hook up the temperature sensor and have it control the hot end in the way that we did in an earlier episode, basically keeping it in a target temperature so the glue is the right temperature that we want. But yeah, pretty much we have everything we need electrically. Uh, so yeah, now we can uh, do more tests and have a fairly proper hot glue gun, although it doesn't have all the bells and whistles on it yet, such as the indicator lights, the controls, and of course the automatic stand. But we'll get those things later on. We're just getting the basics to work now. Well, Karen, we got some good work done on the super glue gun project. Yeah, it seems like we have all of the main components into a single unit that we can hold and test. I think we're in a good place. Yeah, I mean, we're also getting a good idea of how big it's gonna be. So mm -hmm. if we need to change parts of the scale, we can. Well, that's all the time we have for today. If you have any comments or questions about our Super Glue Gun build, post those on the Super Glue Gun subspace on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. They're just like, so like high speed. Yeah. And then when they bump into each other, it's kind of like. Yep. Yep, that was pretty cool. Well, just grab onto some ducktails, I guess. Just thinking about ducktails. Oh yeah! Shoes, man, they like represent the, the oppression of the capitalism, man. Like these sandals are made from 100% recycled hemp. I have some friends getting married in the next few months and I thought it would be great to make a portable photo booth. We're gonna power up the Raspberry Pi. I got some instructions here. Ms. Corbeil is entering her super secret API key. I know some, I got some comments in the episode about the, uh, the rough nature of my hands here, so I'm just uh, cleaning them up.